This is KGW News at Sunrise. Knock it off or I'll do it in That line and the actions that followed got a Vancouver police officer charged with assault. The man in that video was allegedly shoplifting, but the arrest quickly got out of hand. We'll walk you through what happened. And Oregon legislators passed it, but Governor Tina Kotek has yet to sign it into law. We're talking about the bill that would allow you to pump your own gas. There are a few things that could happen to it over the next week. We'll walk you through the possibilities in just a few minutes. Brenda, 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 Brenda. <laughs> Brenda, Brenda. What the? Are we, are we on the air already? Has the You're summer late. show began? Oh my, this is, this this is, is not quite the awkward. first time. Uh, okay, let me gather myself this morning. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Let me turn the lights on here. Uh, whew. I'm sorry, gang. Um, luckily, I'm already at where I need to be this morning. <laughs> we are live at the Street of Dreams, which is taking place this year in Sherwood. And yes, we are making ourselves quite at home. So we are inside one of the three luxury custom homes that you'll find here in Sherwood. Yes, my sleeping quarters. We'll have more <laughs> coming up from the Street of Dreams in just a little bit. But maybe for now, I can take 10 Hello, more fight. minutes, gang. 10 oh more minutes, gosh. that's all I ask. Absolutely, he's got the best job on the planet, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Happy Friday, everyone. We'll talk more with Drew in a second. We'll get to traffic as well, but shall we can start I, with uh, you? Can I just say doing the somersault in the bathrobe was a bit dangerous. It worked out okay. It was. Yeah. yeah it, it worked was. out okay. Good, point. Had something on Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at the Wells Fargo camera this morning. Another gorgeous day upcoming, and the entire weekend looks like we're going to see very little change. Uh, we do have clouds at the beach. We have clouds up in Kelso Longview right now. Might see a little bit of cloudiness come down into the uh, North Valley. You can see some clouds clouds on the horizon there, 61 degrees. Uh, a lot of you are in the 50s again this morning, so very comfortable to start. Sunny 72 at noon. I have the high temperature getting up to 85 degrees. Here's Chris McGinnis. That looks really nice. All right, Roger, take that look at the traffic map. Mostly green, right? That's in good shape. I-405 near Everett. This is the southbound commute coming towards you. And uh, yeah, we're pretty good shape this morning. Guys, back to you. Okay. We've got some mic We got some problems. mic issues we'll there. But now to our top story. Portland fire crews had a really busy night. They responded to two brush fires in just two hours. This is video from the first scene at Northeast Marine Drive and 112th Avenue around 9 o'clock last night. It burned almost a mile of brush. Crews, though, got it under control within about 30 minutes. A second fire happened just an hour later near I-84 at the 102nd Avenue off-ramp. It burned 200 square feet of grass and trees, a homeless camp, and it also threatened homes on the hillside above the freeway. Firefighters got the fire out by 1115. No one was hurt. A Vancouver police officer is facing an assault charge for using a taser on a shoplifting suspect. Now, that's not exactly the part that's out of the ordinary. So what is, is pulling down the suspect's pants and threatening to use the taser on his genitals. We just got body camera footage of what happened. A warning, it may be hard, it may be hard for some people to watch it. So it happened back in May. The video picks up as two Vancouver officers have the alleged shoplifting suspect on the ground in a Walmart parking lot. He jumps up as they go to handcuff him. Police say the suspect then punched one officer in the face and another in the chest during that struggle. Once they got him back on the ground, Officer Andrea Mendoza tased the suspect's back, pulled down his pants, and again threatened to use the taser on his genitals. Knock it off or I'll do it in your nuts! I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. According to the police report, the suspect complied, then was taken into custody. As for Officer Mendoza, she's been on administrative leave since all of this happened. Though it happened in May, the assault charges were filed just this week. In a brief video statement, Vancouver Police Chief Jeff Morey called the incident, quote, disturbing. Beaverton police have identified the man who shot and critically injured a Washington County Sheriff's deputy. He's 34-year-old Christopher James Graves. Court documents show he was being evicted for not paying rent or utilities. The shooting happened Wednesday morning at the Forest Rim Apartments in Tualatin. 
Authorities say Graves shot at the deputies as they tried to serve his eviction notice. One deputy was shot multiple times and is still in the hospital this morning. About two hours after the shooting, Graves was found dead inside his apartment. It's unclear whether officers shot him or he shot himself. Later today, Oregon Governor Tina Kotek says she'll release a list of bills she plans to veto. We don't know what's on that list, but one of the more notable bills she has yet to sign is the pump your own gas bill. Devin Haskins is live with us this morning, and Devin, you asked Governor Kotek about that specific bill. Yeah, correct. So good morning. We're here at the West Burnside uh, Chevron station here in, uh, in, in Portland, and it's been more than a month since Oregon legislators have signed that bill that would allow Oregonians, if it's passed and signed into law, for Oregonians to pump their own gas. So that means if it becomes law, pumps like this that are currently locked right now would become unlocked and you'd be able to pump your own gas at any time during the day, which is a change to the way Oregonians have pumped their gas since 1951. So far, Governor Kotek has refused to answer the question of will she or won't she sign it into law? She says her office has received more than 5,500 emails and comments about the bill. Her office says more than half have showed support for the law change. If Governor Kotek signs the bill into law, you'll have the choice to have the gas station attendant pump your own gas for you, like we have for decades, or you can pump it yourself. Stations would be prohibited from charging more gas, more for gas than an attendant pumps versus yourself. Kotek says she's still listening to Oregonians. And in 2015, as Speaker of the House, she signed off on a similar bill that allowed smaller communities to allow self-serve gas. We have had at least two bills prior to this one that kind of has moved us towards self-service in certain parts of the state. So I'm trying to understand, is this the right next step? And is there support for it? All right, so here's, here's what's next. If that veto or when that veto list comes out and that bill is on that list, it then goes back to the legislature for consideration. Issue is, is they don't meet until next year unless uh, Kotex uh, calls a special session for any bills to be reconsidered or taken up. If she signs it into law, it becomes, uh, becomes law immediately. And if she doesn't sign it, it still becomes law but it would become law the day after the, the expiration, the 30 days notice expiration would happen, which would be next Saturday. So again, we'll wait for that list to come out later today to see if that pump your own gas bill is signed or not. Back to you guys. Devin, thank you. Oregon could soon see a new clean energy project in the gorge. It'll help meet the state's climate goals, but native tribes oppose it because it's on sacred land. The proposed project would be south of Goldendale, Washington. Basically, a developer would build two reservoirs to generate hydroelectricity. One reservoir would sit about 2,000 feet higher than the other, and when there's extra energy from wind and solar, water would get pumped through a tunnel into the upper reservoir. Then, when energy is needed, water would be released from the top reservoir. It would go through a spinning turbine, which would generate enough electricity to power the city of Seattle for up to 12 hours. At a personal level, it's really heartbreaking. And, you know, I think about our, our ancestors who had to deal with um, the dams being built. They had to deal with highways and railroads being constructed. You know, this is another, um, it's like another wave. To get a better understanding of these plans and to hear more from the tribes affected, look for this story right now on KGW.com and on our KGW YouTube channel. And speaking of climate, the White House announced it's rolling out funding to address extreme heat. This after a United Nations announcement that July is likely to be the hottest month ever recorded on Earth. The UN says the World Meteorological Organization confirmed that data. The Biden administration plans to spend $159 million from the president's infrastructure package to develop new forecasting technology and strengthen water storage in Washington, California and Colorado. All right, Rod is joining us now in studio. I have 
heard you say this week that we have some of the best weather, if not yeah. the best weather in the country I right mean, now. Low to mid 80s. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't overly spent time seeing if anybody's as nice as us, so I'm going to make the assumption. The answer is no. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we go with uh, what we are concerned about, the, the headlines across our state today. We're still dealing in gray with the air quality alerts. This is all of Lane County from Florence through Eugene up over Willamette Pass and Deschutes County, Sun River, Lapine, Sisters Bend. These air quality alerts have been extended at this point all the way into Tuesday morning. And again, the biggest smoke maker is that bedrock fire that's burning 27 miles uh, east of Eugene up in the Cascades. And then a new player, high fire danger in these uh, tan and red colors posted across uh, southern Oregon. So we're keeping an eye on that. No watches or warnings here locally in our immediate viewing area. Our air quality is great. We still have a light flow coming off of the Pacific. We have comfortable temperatures. There's the unhealthy dot over La Pine in southern Deschutes County. We are all dry and uh, we will stay that way. It looks like through the weekend, uh, the uh, forecast does show today. And in fact, the observations cloudy up and down the beach. We're also seeing increasing clouds up in Cowlitz County. All of that will be going away during the day and this afternoon we'll all have sunshine. Here's the Rose City this morning. We're at 61 degrees. A lot of you are in the 50s. So overall, it's a really comfortable start. Uh, good morning, Salem. 56 is your temperature. Open Astoria, cloudy 61 right now. Mission clouds increase up in Kelso 58 is the number there out east Baker City 49 and Burns 52 so not a great variance temperature wise across our state this morning forecast numbers for the coast on this getaway Friday perhaps for you morning clouds afternoon sunshine 60s to low 70s expected winds should be fairly light including at the beach itself today McMinnville 84 Salem 85 this is all sunshine northwest winds 5 to 15 we have the morning cloudiness up in Kelso Longview but sun is coming battleground 83 Vancouver 85 and here are my latest seven day numbers. Um, no change really through the weekend. We might have some early clouds here in Portland on uh, Sunday morning, 85, four and two. So pretty nice stuff. And then warming up next week, but the latest models seem to want to hold off hitting 90, but we'll be close to it. I think Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. And that is your seven day forecast for now.